Right, from that, let's cross borders now. And nearly 100 civilians are reported to have been killed and many more injured in clashes as rival armed forces continue with their quest for control of Sudan. For the third day running, intense clashes between Sudan's military and a powerful paramilitary force has seen airstrikes, shelling and gunfire hit busy neighborhoods across the country as two rival generals battle for power. This even as Sudan's army chief has branded the rapid support forces a rebellious group and ordered it to be dissolved. NTV Zainab Ismail has an update on the unfolding situation. Plumes of smoke could be seen rising above Khartoum International Airport on Monday as fighting in Sudan's capital between the paramilitary rapid support forces and the country's armed forces entered the third day. Fires could be seen on the airport's stomach, complicating attempts by mediators to land in Khartoum and deliver humanitarian supplies. The two groups have been battling for the control of key sites in Omdurman and Khartoum, though violence has now spread to other cities. The Sudanese military has dismissed claims from the Rapid Support Forces that they are in control of key sites in Khartoum, including the Meroe International Airport, where RSF paramilitaries said they had gained access to. The two rival groups have been trading claims of victory and accusations of blame since the fighting broke out on Saturday. Sudan's armed forces say RSF claims are misleading information designed to manipulate public opinion. Speaking at the G7 Foreign Ministers' Summit in Japan, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and his U.K. counterpart said the situation in Sudan was worrying, calling for a return of negotiations. There is a shared deep concern uh, about the fighting, uh, the violence that's going on in Sudan, the threat that that poses to civilians, that it poses to the Sudanese nation, and potentially poses even to, uh, to the region. Uh, future lies in the hands of the generals who are engaged in this fight and we call upon them to uh, put peace first, to bring an end to uh, the fighting, to get back to negotiations. The African Union's top council called on Sunday for an immediate ceasefire without conditions and asked the AU Commission Chair Musa Faki Mahmat to immediately travel to Sudan to engage the parties towards a ceasefire. As follows a resolution by IGAD, which also has agreed to send President William Ruto alongside South Sudan's President Salva Kiir and Ismail Omar Gule of Djibouti to help broker a ceasefire. On Sunday, the UN World Food Program said it had temporarily suspended operations in Sudan after three agency employees were killed in clashes the previous day and an aircraft used by it was damaged. Zainab Ismail, NTV. All right, time for a break. And coming up, it is the sports news.